From all of us at Unity of San Antonio, welcome to the Unity of San Antonio Sunday Experience with Reverend Jimmy Scott. Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We offer spiritual teachings that provide practical tools for meaningful and abundant living. We are inclusive and open-minded. Our philosophy is more spiritual than religious and is based in love. We honor all paths to God and we believe in making a positive difference in the world around us. As divine love, we envision a spiritually transformed, peaceful world. We dance in the truth of who we are through meditation, study, and service. Go to our website, unityofsa.org, to learn about all our current online opportunities. For classes, meditation, and projects, we are engaged in to serve the greater San Antonio area. For updates directly in your email, click the envelope icon on our website to sign up for our e-newsletter. Thank you for visiting unityofsa.org. At Unity of San Antonio, we honor the inherent wholeness and wisdom within people of all ages. We are a community inclusive of young people who have a special place in our hearts. Your youth and family ministry are currently homeschooling. This is our blessing for them and for all young people in the world. Please join us. Children and teens, we know who you are. You are the light of God. We love you, we bless you, we celebrate you, and we see you doing great things.
Please welcome our senior minister, Reverend Jimmy Scott. With over 35 years of service in ministry, we are so grateful to Reverend Jimmy for his words of wisdom. Honey, uh, it's our pleasure to be with you this morning. And before we get into the heart of the lesson for this morning, I just want to take an opportunity to move us into a brief time of meditation and prayer. So if you are at home where you can be comfortably seated, I invite you to find a place that's comfortable, that you can really just relax in as we take a few moments to turn inwardly. One of the great advantages of prayer and meditation is it immediately takes our attention away from our present situation and enables us to move into a space of openness and receptivity. And from that space of openness and receptivity, we can sort of reconnoiter our day's activities and think about what is truly important for us in our lives and the work we do and the people we interact with. So just take a moment and close your eyes if it's comfortable again. Take another deep breath. And just feel your breath as it resonates throughout the body temple. There's a certain calmness that comes when we remove our conscious attention to the external world and go inwardly. calms the inner spirit. It settles the mind down. And perhaps most importantly, it reminds us of this immense power that is within us that generates our life. It enables us to communicate. To bless others and to be blessed by others. So it's a powerful experience. Just rest right there. Just breathe. Relax. Now take another deep breath. And then just slowly and ever so gently open your eyes and come back to the here and now. So this morning's topic is confronting woundedness. And I want to open this morning's message with a quote from Debbie Ford. Debbie Ford said, within ourselves are voices that provide us with all the answers we need. The answers we need to heal our deepest wounds, 
to transcend our limitations, to overcome our obstacles or challenges, and to see where the soul is longing to go. Close quote. In choosing my topic for this morning, my first intent was to move beyond what I call word associations, because generally we associate words with our experiences of the words. For instance, when we generally think of confrontation, we think it's, it's a bad thing. Someone gets hurt, so we should avoid confrontations at all costs. But if done right and with the right intentions, a confrontation is an act of respect because it allows for honesty and it allows for transparency. And when we take the idea of confrontation to the personal level, confrontation is an inner process that enables us to confront our fears, to confront our perceived hurts and our actual hurts, to confront our wounds, and it gets even more complicated. It gets more complicated primarily because we think of our wounds as always being bad or bringing forth pain or even unnecessary. But the reality is everything happens in life for a reason. The only thing that doesn't happen when we feel like we are upset is we are actually moving into a denial that we are unaware of. Everything happens in life for a reason. Another thing I want to address is Debbie Ford's last statement in the quote that I shared with you. See where the soul is longing to go. One of the ongoing challenges with religion and religiosity is this belief that the soul's journey is limited to certain times or a certain space or certain circumstances. The fact is the soul is always longing for expression. It is always seeking to elevate our consciousness in every undertaking that we have in life. And the reason it is doing so is to remind us that we can always be better, we can always be stronger, we can always be wiser, and more importantly, to remind us that we can do more than we think we can, and we can be more than we think we are. And we are not defined by any of what happens to us or through us. That does not define us. None of it defines us. Back in 1997, when Caroline Mace wrote her groundbreaking book about why people in general don't heal, there were a lot of groundbreaking revelations in that book. And one of the most important revelations for then and for now is the fact that there are many forms of brokenness in our world and in our lives. Another very important revelation she shared was and still is that brokenness is a worldwide phenomenon. And yet another even more important revelation she revealed was that people want to be healed and they want to be whole, but they often can't or choose not to admit it to themselves. first and foremost, and then they are very reluctant to re reveal it to anyone else. Because to do so might suggest that he or she is weak or less than or any number of other reasons that might 
set them apart from this fallacy of normalcy that we as a collective body of humanity have set up for ourselves. One of the most poignant and revealing examples that she wrote about in her book, Why People Don't Heal, was the 1970s electoral process when George McGovern was running for president and his vice presidential candidate was a man by the name of Thomas Eagleton. And somewhere in the midway of the campaign, Eagleton was removed from the process because he had admitted he had undergone psychotherapy in order to be healed from some mental stresses that he was having in his life. And when I reread this book, I thought about how poignant that really is. You can take one unbiased look at our politics of today, and it looks as if we have not progressed at all. One of my favorite lines from the book of Revelation, the third chapter and the eighth verse, says, Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one can shut. Equally important is what that scripture does not say. It does not say that you have to walk through it. So what that implies is that choice is always in front of us. Choice is always left up to us. That's true for me, it's true for every one of us. Take a listen to this statement from Gary Zuckoff. I quote, he says, the requirements for our evolution have changed. Survival is no longer sufficient. Our evolution now requires us to develop spiritually, to become emotionally aware, and to make responsible choices. It requires us to align ourselves with the values of the soul, i.e. values like harmony, values like cooperation, values like sharing, and values like reverence for life, close quote. Alignment is an interesting term because in a spiritual sense, alignment is different than the everyday definition of the term alignment. Spiritual line, alignment actually takes us beyond our normal or probably more appropriately our abnormal lives. Traditionally, when we humans think of normalcy, we think three-dimensionally. Spiritual alignment is connecting, it's realizing, it's accepting, it's knowing your essence. So it goes way deeper than just attaching or aligning as we generally think of it. It's something that you can't know intellectually. You have to feel it down deep in your soul. You have to instinctively know it. Charles Fillmore often talked about that concept and when he did, he used the terms discernment and faith because those two terms are something that we are familiar with and they are something that we can connect to. And I think that's about as close as we can get intellectually to understanding or to knowing 
our true essence. Yet, I dare say that many of us have had moments in our lives where or when we truly know who we are. And we've used those moments to elevate the circumstances that we're in to, in that particular moment to another level. It happens to us infrequent, infrequently. And we develop in those special moments an alertness that we're not typically allowed to develop or allow ourselves to develop. Or perhaps I should say that that we haven't consciously felt ourselves attuned to. It's, it's almost indescribable. When I was a child, I, I had a big cal calico tomcat, and if you uh, ever had cats before, you know they are notoriously accustomed to taking catnaps. And they'll take them anywhere, anytime, any place. Sometimes, just for the heck of it, it seems, they'll just doze off to sleep on top of a cabinet or a countertop, anywhere they choose to just take a nap. And as a kid, I often watch my cat when he'd jump up on my chest of drawers and go to sleep. And sometimes, just for the heck of it, I'd just kind of quietly slide my feet across the floor. And the cat would always cock one eye open, always watching, alert, always anxiously looking for the slightest little disturbance. And as I think about that today, I think how attuned cats are to their environment. So much so that even in the process of taking a nap, even the slightest disturbance creates something instinctual in them to, to be more alert. There's a scripture in the Gospels that says, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. The Son of Man is a colloquialism for the Christ consciousness. So put in modern day terms, it could just as easily have read, Stay alert. Don't be surprised. Don't be a surprise that you are always capable of responding appropriately to every moment. You can trust your instincts. You can trust your perception. And you don't have to be fooled by outer appearances or inner appearances for that matter. That's a powerful awareness to have. Let me speak just a moment to inner appearances. In the United Kingdom today, there are most recent lockdown due to the coronavirus experience. I think this is their third lockdown. They undertook a study. And in this study, it was indicated that 60% of their entire population felt overwhelmingly tired, weary, even worthless, and then hopeless. Think about that. 60% of the population of an entire nation felt overwhelmingly tired, weary, even worthless, and hopeless. The real and complex fact 
His life has changed for all of us. It's changed worldwide. And it's reminding humanity of its vulnerability. But in the same way, we understand that life is always changing anyway. And so our illusion of having had some level of control over all things is now coming to the forefront. And it's forcing us to take a look at some of our behavior, some of our beliefs, and not just to take a look at them, but maybe change some, improve upon some, and maybe even get rid of some. The fact of the matter is we are only hopeless when we think we are and we don't have any verified way of avoiding being vulnerable because there are not any ways to avoid it. And finally, this concept of worth, that's always subjective. On a personal note, the greatest wounds I've had to deal with in my life has been the wound of rejection. Been rejected on a multiplicity of levels. But the irony is the rejections have never stopped me. In some instances, they may have slowed me down. In other instances, they may have caused me to do some deep soul searching. And as a result of doing that deep soul searching, ultimately decide on what matters most to me in my life. And from that point forward, I move on with the wounds and all. The challenges that confront us are always many and varied. But we are made in an amazing image, that being the image of the Christ. And that's not just a biblical image, it's the true image of all of humanity without all of the attachments that human beings have the tendency to try to place upon it. And if we can just remember that in the times when we are wounded or it feels as if we are being overwhelmed by what is taking place in our lives, we'll be much the better for it. So I want to thank you for being with us this morning or tuning in, as the saying goes. And I encourage you to have a blessed week. The Unity of San Antonio is grateful for your attention and we appreciate your support. Keep the faith. Your giving is especially important during this time. We invite you to participate in the flow of abundant living through your generosity to our spiritual community of contributing. Please go to unityofsa.org, click the green donate to donate online or mail a check to Unity of San Antonio, 8103 Broadway, Suite 210, San Antonio, Texas, 78209. Please join us in our prosperity blessing. Divine love as our community blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we are, all we give, and all we receive. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We love you and can't wait to see you again soon. Hugs. If you love to sing, please join our virtual choir. Everyone is welcome. Contact Pamela, our Director of Music Ministry at Office at unityofsa.org. Join us today for Sunday Social Hour at 1230 and connect with your community online. Grab a snack and a cup of coffee or tea and join us for some great conversation 
heartfelt support and lots of laughs. We look forward to seeing you then. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. In closing our service, please join us in our community blessing and prayer for protection, followed by It's a Brand New Day. Beloved friends, I see your divine light. I see your open heart. I see your life transforming. I celebrate your divine identity as you radiate your light in the world. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. Pray. The power of love has, has rolled, rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. Pray. Faith can move a mountain, part that stormy sea. Love can be a fountain, pouring over me. Hope can build a future, so we can truly say the past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands and celebrate. Power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, 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 hey. it's a brand new day. Doubts become believing that death can be destroyed. Painful loss and grieving can open us to joy. The dawn of resurrection can chase our fears away. The past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. Pray. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. Pray. Beautiful lights, thank you for your presence, your support, and your love. Have a blessed week.